Stafford tree. Where are we at? John, are we down? There's a mango tree. John, tell us about this mango tree. It's the cog shawl we saw earlier. And now it has some fruit on it. I cannot believe it. Are you sure we're not down south? This is Tallahassee. Well, we, on, we are on the south wall. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but hey. Hi. That's Sharon out there. This is Tallahassee. This is her tree. Her beautiful baby. We, we Five years ago. Five years ago? Five years ago. Wow. We, it topped off. Yeah, it's it grown. That's true. You got to keep it lower. But it's grown a lot. And look at the fruit. We haven't really shown a video on it in a while since it was making little fruits or flowers. Look at that. How much does that weigh, you think? All of them? Probably at least a pound each. Every time I see this tree, I just can't believe this in Tallahassee. Look at the trunk. Look at that trunk. So John pulled it down. Remember in the last video? He screened it by growing it up and then pulling one side down and then pulling the other one. I'm going to go and chip the twigs to get it to branch. Again, they bear on the, the tips of the twigs so throughout the growing season. You yeah. keep pinching it? Pinching it so that they branch, but then sometime around September, October, you gotta quit. Uh huh. Because the, these are gonna be the flower buds, so you have to let these twigs, the tips of the twigs, mature. That's good to know. For flowering somewhere between December and March, whenever they decide to flower. Uh huh. So, how do you, how do you get the idea to, um, you know, grow it straight up and then pull one side over the limb and then let it stay kind of... I like the way the canopy is, the way well, you I, can see how the trunk is. It's pulled I, over. I only want this... The only permanent part of the tree for me is this low tier of branches. And then all of this, this growth, this vertical growth is going to be cut back. And you see how this one's getting pretty tall. Mm -hmm. Maybe next season we're not going to be able to reach it. So I'm going to want to take this back here and start the process over. Okay. But then we'll still have all the fruiting wood out here, so the tree will never it's still, be, it's still be giving. Yeah. You got it all figured out. Did you see this one? So other one. Wow. That is remarkable. Yeah. I meant to show everybody this. Check out all of the pineapples growing. John, what variety are these? Uh, yeah. Cayenne pipes. And then you can see the new growth. He put, what was that fertilizer you stick on it? Or you put around it? It's Tigersol Greening Guard. It's a, it's a Tigersol Citrus Greening Guard. It's a mineral supplement. And it helps put it back to zero, the, the bacteria that's in its body. Didn't you say that it, it kind of, the bacteria clogs up its pipes and it, it makes it die, decline really bad? It messes up the nutrient flow from the top to the bottom. Mm -hmm. And the root system starts to die off and become inefficient and the minerals you're kind of overdosing the soil with the minerals mm -hmm. so the less efficient root system gets enough to keep the tree healthy oh that's how it works yeah that's how it works and you can see it's it's hard to tell that the plant's greening up but like you were showing you can see it in the new growth it's, so it's coming right back uh, we, so it's, we got it late but we have it out and it looks it's looking better here's the page and look at all the fruits on it and you said this is really tolerant to the greening. Yeah. But look how healthy it looks. It, it's a complex hybrid. And it's, it's, it kind of comes from the same gene pool as Sugar Bell. Wow. Very uh, productive, very tasty. Boy, this is small, this branch. Well, 
what's the, what's the flavor on this one? It is a pear hybrid. You know, it's got Asian pear in it, and it's in its gene, but it, uh, so it's, it's a little crisper, but it's a very good flavor pear. I like it better than the more common pears. And this is a pear tree that John has pulled the limbs down and grafted multi types of fruits on fruit scion wood on it. And it needs to be pruned too. Pruned back. This, this is a really good looking branch as far as the pruning and orientation goes. But this one lost its pollinator. This is a real late blooming type. Um, is that why it's so deformed? The fruit? Mm -hmm. No, it, it's just luck of the draw uh -huh. that we got messed up. But um, it, it has set perfectly good fruit in the past when it had a pollinator. I need to put something on it that blooms at the same time. So you have another variety here. That it does not look like thick wrap. So. Oh yeah, it didn't. I'm looking at the wrong but this one. piece. Don't you have to pull the limbs down on these for it to uh, flower one, heavily? This one's being, yeah, yeah. So this is a, a graft of Suri Asian pear, and it's not quite big enough for me to want to pull it down yet. But it, it's growing slowly, but it's growing. And then this is Carnes. Carnes is one of these hard pears, but I really like the flavor on Carnes, and I don't like the flavor on most of them. I like, not, I like the shape on them. The it's shape, round, apple. real round. It's good flavor, though. You're Hopefully you can try one. I'd love to. Uh, I'm so, not in love with the flavor of kefir and pineapple pears. You don't like the what aftertaste of these other ones you kind talk about? Bland and kind of bland. Hard. I think the hard ones are real good for like good. jamming and cooking. So if someone wanted to, you know, multigraph a tree like this, do you have to nip off other tips on the branch when you're grafting on a limb so it doesn't compete? Yeah. Yeah, like like this. I don't want any of these. So, so they'd be taking energy from that main, the main graft, right? So this is how I discourage this growth. Okay. I discourage it by not letting it happen. <laughs> and then, and there you go. And then now there's excess capacity in the root system, so it will stimulate growth. The roots make hormones that tell the top to grow and the top makes hormones that tell the bottom to grow and they keep try to keep them balanced and when one grows then it signals the other one to grow more and so one grows and the other grows. I love that. So by removing this foliage it makes an excess of hormones and it'll cause growth here where you want it. It's uh, auxins from the leaf and I don't even know how to pronounce it, catechins maybe from the bottom. We have a lot of blueberries here. What's the names of these, John? Or what's this one, John? We're gonna call it blueberry. <laughs> this is a variety blueberry. We planted, um, considering how late it is, or that, that one might be a foxy. That was really good, though. Uh, it's, it makes a pretty big fruit. Got a nice sweetness to it. I think that's probably a foxy. Now, what is this one? That's a wild type. Is that edible? I've never seen one. Look how. Let's see. It makes a better muffin. Yeah, it would make a really good muffin. When you bite into it, you get a really intense blueberry flavor. Much these different. Get, these guys kind of cook to a big, mushy, wet spot in your muffin. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the ones you see in the little muffins that you buy. Wild, like northern low bush blueberry, have similarly small fruit. Okay. Another small fruited kind? Yeah. This is the most common at my farm of Quincy. You can try that. Is this the one that's growing uh, as a good rootstock? No. It just grows there. I have to show you a picture. I don't know if I sent you, but it was of a, of a blueberry. And I'm not sure. That was not bad. Yeah, I think this is the one I like better. I like that one. Yeah. There you go. The other one is not so tasty. Mm -mm, the other one was kind of bland. And Which I don't remember the species, but the small leaf one has a better flavor. And 
it, because the, it's a wild population, I get as early as any cultivated variety, there's blueberries at the farm, and later than any cultivated How variety. How about that? Just the diversity of the population. That's perfect. They're full of vitamins for you. Um, I'll have to show you the picture of the one that I found. It may actually just be a regular blueberry that was planted there before I bought the property. We've got the property. It could be a wild rabbit eye too. It might be. I'll have to. Sh I'll show you. And tell me. It has similar big leaves. Here, look. It's got maybe this little bit of. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that might be one. This is about this big. It's about. I, well, that could be somebody's cultivator. So the raised bed he did, he, he makes the charcoal in there to help with our malaria and bacterial and to hold nutrition. And to hold a lot of nu nutrition in there. For, because of, they like a lot of organic material because of the clay soils here. So you gotta mound them up if you want them to do good. And they need immediate drainage. Not log not logging soil. And, they'll die. And even the, the sandy loam topsoil that's here is not enough. A lot of times you'll see in the farms they'll have them in rows mounted up but the, the sparkleberry uh -huh. if you graft them on sparkleberry rootstocks they're more disease resistant and more tolerant to both wet and dry soil and you grow them too don't you the sparkleberry does the sparkleberry taste actually good that's the worst one I've ever that's why you graft it on it and and it's a good rootstock <laughs> oh no it's it has good benefit you know it has good rootstock it, and it confers disease resistance how about that? It's like an apple root making an apple tree more disease. Wow. Look at the figs. And John, he uh, he actually controlled how the the limbs went out on this one, didn't you? Yeah. And this is a turkey fig, wasn't it? We're trying to do the, yes, it's a turkey fig. We're trying to do the commercial production techniques, pruning techniques. And I like the Japanese style. That's right over here. Beautiful. Did it make any fruits this year? Or did it make any fruits? It's working on it. Pushing on. Oh yeah, it is pushing on. I missed them. And like John was talking about, the shoots that shoot straight up, they're going to be the ones productive with fruit. So you want to prune off the ones? Prune off any side branches, and if they're too congested, probably this one shouldn't be here. But you can see it's. These are the first figs and it's producing new young figs as it grows. So if it continues to grow, we should continue to produce new figs. I love them. And we enjoy the banana trees. What kind were these again? That's Orinoco. Orinoco. Well, I have to get a pup from the from this one. Oh look at all the bee honey beads and up in the flower. We could take one up today That'd be awesome. You see all the honey bees around the flower I saw a few flying. I think you got a better angle. Hold on. Look up in there. I don't know if you guys can see this but you can see. Oh yeah there they are. So they're gonna have lots of bananas this year. They're just too cool. Banana. But that's good. We'll go bananas. Hey John, what type of uh, squash is this again? It almost looks like a Seminole, but... It's a type, I think it's more of a zucchini type. Um, it has an Italian name. And over here you can see the fruit. We'll come around and show you the fruit. This is a red Catley guava, sometimes called a strawberry guava. The red ones come from the top of the mountain in uh, the Amazon. Um, and then get midway down the kind of integrate between red and yellow and then the lowland catleys are the yellow also called lemon guava and uh, of course the ones in the top of the mountain are a little more cold tolerant uh -huh. and as far as i know this is the most cold tolerant of the true guavas but there's so many in brazil i could imagine there's, there's another one there's I probably know. another one there was some fruit on here you know i saw that, the flowers that was a long time ago that it's doing its second crop now how about See? that Flowers. Did you get to try some this year? I don't think I was over here. They already grabbed it. You know, or the, or the dog ate it. 
<laughs> the dog probably ate it. He loves he loves all his fruit. He'll live forever. Here's a flower that's open. Oh, nice. So we're we're in June and it's flowering the second, second time. crop. Uh, the one at my house has a ton of fruit on it. How big are they right now? They're um, you know this big or this big. It's not size. So I guess one centimeter to three quarters of an inch maybe. So we're in that range. If you love guavas, you can still get away growing the strawberry guava in a cooler climate. But it has the fruit has more seeds in it, but you just eat around it. More hard seeds, right? I kind of like eating them out of hand before the strawberry guavas. Oh, yeah? yeah? I think they have a better flavor. More like strawberry? Mm, more sweeter. Sweeter? A lot of folks think that these. Arapaho and the other Arkansas blackberries don't taste that good, but like blueberries, they turn purple before they're actually ripe. So they kind of get a darker purple, and they, when you just barely touch them, they'll come right off. This one, it's a little red. That's going to be tart. You really got to let them get very dark black and easy to pick off. That's when they're ripe and they taste delicious. Hello. This one. That's really good. This one just fell right off of my fingers. That's how it, how it tastes. Good rich blackberry flavor. That's yummy. See how this one is? Yeah. That's that a big one right there. It shows how, how you do it. <laughs> that's, the good, that's the good stuff. That's good stuff. Gotta find a big one. So these are both oh. the varieties that are intertwined this is arapaho and natchez but it it was planted in 2007 and i don't remember it is just it is a giving tree i mean giving uh if you if you look under there you might find something that we didn't eat it's a giving blackberry there's one Wow. I've got to get some of these from you. That's really good. Look at that. They, and they get quite large. If you guys want any, you just know where to go. Quincy's Nursery. Talk to John. He'll hook you up. You can see how he used the trellis to kind of pull out the, the limbs and on to kind of keep it up. Yeah. And then another thing about it, it kind of controls the, the way it looks. Uh, yeah. You kind of train it. It keeps it off the ground. So it's not on. And I would want the new canes to come over like this. You know, that way you can grab it better. Ideally, I have the new canes to come over the top. Do you prefer the thornless? Yes. That way you don't get. I actually mowed all my thorny ones that I used to propagate. The thorny are more productive. Do they have a better flavor? No. No. And they hurt me. But yeah, I, I don't like when they hurt me. Because every time you reach in there, you're going to get one, a thorn in your finger you know, or your for arm. The, for the first 35 years of my life, I didn't care. I would get cut up in the blackberry patch and scratched up like, you know, like little kids do. Mm -hmm. And I didn't care. And then at some point, I decided to mow. No, I think it was because you, you came across this beautiful wonder. I had, you know, I had these thornless ones for a decade before I gave up on the thorny ones. How about that? I have one left. I can't remember the name of it, but it makes it a really sweet giant berry. Wow. That's the only one we can. That'll make you want to keep it around. It's a real sweet with a, a blackberry flavor. Yeah, and, and just, just huge.